Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. As summer winds down, there's typically a small window of opportunity for producers who want another round of alfalfa cut before winter arrives. And this year, thanks to the recent rains, that window has opened a little bit wider. For some guidance, here's our OSU Extension Forage System Specialist, Dr. Alex Roccatelli. So believe it or not, appears that in five weeks, the summer is gonna be gone and the fall is gonna come. And some producers might be wondering, um, last year with the drought, I lost some of my alfalfa stands. When would be the best time this year to plant? I know that some producers was lucky planting during the spring and even could get two cuts uh, with some alfalfa plant during the spring, but some producers were a little more conservative and wait for the fall to plant the alfalfa. And I would say, if you had done that and wait for the fall, well, appears that that's the best time for you think about planting alfalfa. We are at mid-August, where we can really start to think about planting and we have good moisture in the soil in most part of the state. And I just want to touch on some things when talk about establishing new alfalfa stands. The first thing, even before thinking about uh, seeding or prepping the soil, is make sure that if you had alfalfa in the last two years in the site that you want to plant alfalfa again, uh, think about alfalfa autotoxicity. Depending on your soil type, the age of your old stand, uh, we might have some chemicals that was produced from the last alfalfa stand that may inhibit the new seedlings coming. Also, uh, go back three, 36 months or three years on your management and see if you had other crops in that field, if you had applied the pycloran or sulfonylurea type of herbicides because alfalfa is very sensitive to those types of herbicides and you may have a problem when trying to establish alfalfa if there are residues of those herbicides in the soil. So if you had applied those, please go and do a herbicide bioassay and make sure that the soil is completely free of residues of those herbicides before planting. And then something that we need to make sure is the area has a deep soil 25 inches deep or more, considerable flat, let's say maximum of 2% slope, and also that is a type of soil that doesn't occur water logging. Water logging will really compromise your alfalfa stand. Alfalfa doesn't stand in water for too long. If those requirements were checked, okay, now we think about fertilization, even though before prepping the soil. Very important, pH. When you talk about pH, alfalfa can grow well in a pH of 6. However, I would say better that you start in a soil that you have 6.5 to 6.8. Why? Because you might want to invest in that alfalfa seed and stay there for 4 or 5 years. And year after year, as you go harvesting with many harvests of alfalfa, the soil tends to acidify. So you don't want to start with six, and in the second or third year, you need to broadcast more lime there because the pH goes lower than 5.9, 5.8, and you start to lose uh, yield. And also, before prepping the soil, make sure that you apply phosphorus and potassium and other macro and micronutrients according to a soil analysis. And then, I think that most of the producers are pretty much uh, familiarized with the process. You do a primary tillage about eight inches deep, incorporating all the lime, fertilization that you need. And then you go and you prep a firm seed bed that when you step in the soil, you are gonna have a depth that goes, that sinks with your boot, uh, no more than three eighths or one third deep. We have good fact sheets on alfalfa autotoxicity, on how to select uh, uh, appropriate alfalfa seed for your location. To access those fact sheets, go to the SunUp website. <laughs>